If you are in or about to be in a long distance relationship, I'm gonna tell you the three rules you have to do in order to make it work. Hi cuties, happy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever you are watching this, I am Lee, and today I am telling you about how I make a long distance work while I do my hair. I would like no judgment please because I am curling my hair with a flat iron, like not for the first time, but this is still super, super new to me, like I'm not very good at it at all. I definitely noticed there are still some kinks in my hair. Also at the end of this video, I will forget to brush out the curls and you are to ignore that. <laughs> if you wanna skip through to any part of this video, I will leave time codes in the description as well as all of the different products that I use today. Make sure that you like this video right now, go do it, and also make sure you hit subscribe. Also, do that right now. <laughs> With all of that out of the way now, let's get into the video. <laughs> I want to tell you this super freaking romantic story of how I met my boyfriend. I swear to God, every time I retell it, I'm like, oh my God, I am actually living in a rom-com. <laughs> but before we get started, let me just tell you about the products that I am using before even we got here today. How I got my hair looking like this. Literally, literally, if you are not using it, you have to buy it on Amazon right now. I swear to God, it is that good. It is the Arvenzalia Hydrating Argan Oil Hair Mask. Oh my gosh, I swear to God, my hair feels like liquid after I use it. It is so beautiful and lush and gorgeous. 11 out of 10, 12 out of 10, must use product. <laughs> and then after I get out of the shower, I always put in my It's a 10. I love that product. It is a heat protectant, so I can do whatever I want to my hair after I use it. Today, I'm gonna be using a lot of dry shampoo because these roots are so oily. Oh my gosh, that's not even the end of it. I have my scoonchy hair ties because I always just have these like lying around everywhere. I love that they match, oh, got a little hair in it. I love that they match my hair color and I literally can just get a pack of like a hundred of them. I'm also going to be using this HSI Professional One Inch Ceramic Hair Straightener. It is honestly amazing. I love this because it only cost me $50 for an entire kit of products and it works super, super well and I didn't have to pay a gajillion dollars for it. And then also my brush, if you fall, <laughs> <laughs> just got a little hair in my mouth. If you follow me, you know that I am a closeted Disney adult, so I have my little aerial wet brush. Let me finish getting all of this stuff into my hair and then we can do do the fun story time. Literally, when you start looking like Elsa, that's how you know it's working and it's good. <laughs> you want all of that white grandma look. It's giving geriatric. <laughs> But I like when I use Batiste, like how much volume it gives my hair because when your hair is oily and old, like it can just get so flat and like bleh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Back to the romance. I met my boyfriend, Dara, and that name alone is how you know that he is not from America. I met him while I was on vacation in Ireland, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know that he has been Ireland boy from the get-go. But for some reason, my alma mater, Northwestern, was playing a football game in Dublin. I literally still do not understand why, because we were literally playing a game against a team in our conference, Nebraska. Why could they not have played in the Midwest? I do not know, but they decided to play in Dublin. So I went with my best friend at the time and that is also another story time for another day because we do not talk anymore and I'm gonna get emotional just thinking about that. But anyway, <laughs> when we went, I was like, oh my gosh, like let me change my hinge location at all the cities we go to so we can meet some local lads. It's gonna be a good way to meet actual people that live in Ireland. When we got to Dublin, I obviously changed my location to Dublin and we matched with this, or I matched, but it was approved by my friend, um, with this super funny, witty guy and we were like oh my gosh you should come out tonight and meet us at bad bobs and temple bar and he was like totally bet like we'll see you there but i would love to bring my friend because you're gonna be with a friend and i was like oh my gosh don't bring him because my friend has a boyfriend he was very like no my friend's coming <laughs> he said explicitly no it's gonna be the buddy cop experience like i gotta bring him like you're gonna want him there so my friend was like okay like we'll be fine like if he knows the deal you know because he was like don't worry like i won't let him hit on her so we were like cool 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 like your friend can come along then so the guy and his name was donal shows up to bad bobs and he comes up to me and he hands me a cider which was my drink of choice in ireland 
because all the bars in Ireland just readily serve cider, which I feel like is not a thing in America. I'm not a beer drinker, so I was very happy to have so much cider just present everywhere. <laughs> he hands me this drink and then he literally goes, this is my much more attractive friend, Dara. I turn and I'm like, that is your much more attractive friend, Dara. <laughs> in my head, I said that in my head. <laughs> But instantly I was so smitten like from the get-go. I was like this guy is so sexy He has such a thick neck and he's just so sexy But I'm not even gonna lie like I thought that these boys wanted to have a threesome They had a whole bit nailed down where I was like, oh my gosh They do this to American girls every single week. This is how they get them Like this is their little thing and then they both bring them home and then they both bang them this is what happens because literally immediately they were like, okay, like what state are y'all from? So I'm like, oh, I'm from Georgia. And immediately they just start going like Peach State, Jimmy Carter, Bible Belt, just listing every random fact that they associate with Georgia. And then we started just naming random states and they started just doing that to all the different states. And it's like, what the literal hell? And every time we asked them, like, how do you know all this? They just kept saying, like, well, we're well-educated men. Like, we're so smart. Like, we know our facts. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God, this is a bit. They're turning on the charm. They know so much about America because they just love American girls. And this is what they do. So then at one point, too, Donal left for a second to go to the bar or go to the bathroom. And so I pulled Dara aside and I was like, Mm, I have questions because also they both were kind of dancing with me They both were all up on me and I realize this now just because obviously Donal was my date and then Dara was because he really liked me and like he was trying to see like you know what he could do I pulled Dara's hand and I was like I have questions and he was being all flirty like what like what are your questions so I was like oh my gosh I was getting so worried I was like oh my god what's happening I was trying to like quell my fears and I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do because I was like okay no matter what at the end of the day like I just really want to get with this guy also not gonna lie at this point i had totally forgotten his name we will circle back to that but i had no idea what this man's name was at this point so <laughs> the bar we were at stopped playing music and so then we were like oh my gosh let's all go to coppers so coppers is this like super fun dance club so we decided to walk there and on our way there though the boys were kind of like being a little distant so we were actually like almost like not gonna go but then we found out exactly it was where we were going because they kept changing their minds and then they're like no we're gonna go to coppers we were like okay this is the one place like people when we were in galway they told us we had to go there so we were like okay like we have to go here we're gonna we're gonna stick with these boys when we get there right before we go in i was freaking out to my friend i was like so nervous i was like oh my gosh like what do i do what do i do i just really want to kiss the cute guy she was like lee you're never gonna see these boys again kiss the cute guy and so i was like okay you're right i'm literally never gonna see them again i might as well just kiss the boy i really like so we get down there we start dancing and i immediately was like just feeling the vibe so pretty quickly me and dara had a little moment dancing together and then we leaned into kiss and right before we did i was kind of freaking out like oh my god like this is so uncouth this is like very rude to my date but as soon as we started kissing I felt like I was like melting into him. I know people say butterflies and stuff, but I tell you, I didn't feel butterflies. I felt like just this comfort and the sense of ease and the sense of wonderfulness that I had never felt before in a kiss. And it felt like I never wanted to leave his mouth. Like it felt just so beautiful. And then that turned into a very long time of us making out. We were making out for quite a bit. Finally, I was like, are you gonna take this off of me because <laughs> he kept like playing with the straps of my shirt and then he was like oh yeah where are you staying and then i kind of was like uh dude i'm staying in a room with my friend what about you like why don't we go back to your place and then he was like oh i live at home and that's when i found out that most people in europe and ireland live at home until like their mid-20s so that was very fascinating because that is obviously not the case in america but we both were like uh and then i was like let's problem solve and then he was kind of like what if we get a hotel? And I was like, yeah. And then we looked at our phones and it was 2 a.m. And we were like, okay, this is not happening. So then he was like, well, what about tomorrow? And I was like, ah, that's so crazy, but 100% yes, let's do it. He ended up walking us home. We made out on the street for like, I swear I got an hour and a half, two hours. He put his number on my phone, which is when I was like, oh, this is my moment. I'm gonna finally learn his name. <laughs> and then he put his name on my phone and it had a GH and I was like, 
oh my god what even is this i had to go home and google to make sure i knew how to pronounce it but that's how i learned his name was dara d-a-r-r-a-g-h <laughs> ended up picking me up the next day and literally it was just like that's how we both kind of were like oh we knew we really liked each other because we both say it's this moment when i asked him when the last time he sharded was <laughs> but i like to ask that to know how people respond to that question and he responded to it very well and was very kind and very nice about it so i was like okay i think he's a keeper and he just thought when i asked that question that i was super silly and really fun that i could like take an intimate moment and still be silly and fun oh i definitely royally messed that one up okay let's try this again so that's how we both kind of knew in that moment like oh okay this is something worth exploring and then that night he offered to drive me the air me and my friends at the airport the next day and i was like our flight's at 6 a.m and he still was super gung-ho to do it and i was like oh this boy must really like me then he picked us up and drove us to the airport on the way there too he was talking about visiting america for the first time because he'd never gone to america ever before i got back to america and we talked literally every single day since and he ended up making that first trip over here he came to visit me in los angeles and then he asked me to be his girlfriend and now we're both my girlfriend <laughs> so with all of that context now I feel like I can tell you about the rules of how to make long distance work. <laughs> Based on what I had seen other successful couples do, based on my own research and based on my gut instinct, okay? These were the three rules that I told Dara that we had to follow in order to become boyfriend-girlfriend. <laughs> Rule number one, practice consistent communication. For me, I said specifically that I wanted to FaceTime every single day. I know that that is not feasible, okay? I know that there are gonna be days where we are not able to FaceTime. That's okay, because we're still going to communicate. We currently have a snap streak running, okay? So no matter what, we're always gonna be Snapchatting each other. I think we're on literally like day 150 or something like that. <laughs> also we're gonna text each other we're gonna give each other little updates on our day we are going to send voice memos if there's something long that we want to share with each other or something that we're talking about and we're really passionate about the subject and then also you're gonna have some spicy facetimes okay if you're long distance you're still gonna want to have an intimate relationship so get a little nakey open up that <laughs> facetime app and have fun with your partner just because you're apart from each other doesn't mean that you can't be intimate similarly just because you're far apart does not mean that you can't go on dates you can still have that quality time together and just do it a different way something that i really like to do is cook dinner on facetime with dara you can also watch movies together this is why literally why they invented teleparty which used to be netflix party and then also disney plus has group Group watch so you can send emojis like on the screen while you're watching the same show with people which is literally so sweet Dara and I actually did this recently we watched pixel perfect okay I kind of lost this girl where the hell did it go okay we watched pixel perfect together recently we were on FaceTime and we just kind of like sent those little emojis to each other <laughs> while we were watching and we could see each other like laugh while we were on FaceTime it was just super super cute and then another thing that I love to do is watch shows that are only on the UK like through FaceTime with Dara that is so fun and it's how I've gone hooked on the show called Naked Attraction. Any of my UK cuties out there, you know how amazing the show is. If you don't know the show, quick synopsis TLDR because I love getting sidetracked. One person, okay, they enter because they like want to go on a date and they have six people that they have like matched them with and they put them in these pods. And then these pods get revealed body part by body part, starting with their genitals. Then they have to eliminate people based on the body parts that they are able to see. So it starts by literally showing everyone their PP or their vagine or whatever they got. And then <laughs> they have to be like, I think you're ugly, bye. <laughs> and then and then they show chest down and then they show face oh my god it's so crazy they end up with a partner at the end and then they go on a date and then like a month later or whatever they do like an interview to say if they're like still seeing each other oh my god i swear to god it's so juicy and what's also going to be super important is acknowledging each other's attachment styles i have extremely anxious attachment if you can't tell that about me i am a very anxious person dara is extremely well equipped to deal with me as a secure attachment style <laughs> side note in any relationship if you are have an insecure attachment having a secure partner is literally the best thing that you can ever do for yourself but because he is secure attachment he's able to give me the reassurance that i need in order to function on like a day-to-day -day basis but then also just be in a long distance relationship actually the biggest and best example of this is when i first got back in america like 
like the first day and our second day i didn't hear from him like the whole day and i was like freaking out i kind of was like okay like this is it i'm never gonna hear from him again like it was just my ireland love story and i was already trying to like grieve that loss after like 12 hours or something like that not even 12 hours i think it was actually a full day i think it was like full 24 hours i get a long like two minute voice note from him and it was like, hey, Lee, by the way, I've been on a road trip. I'm in the country. We have like no Wi-Fi. So that's why I haven't been texting or calling you. Also, I know when you were in Ireland, we talked about maybe FaceTiming. I'm actually free on Wednesday. Do you want to FaceTime then? This boy literally quelled all of the fears that I had, could have had, was thinking, whatever, without me even asking him about it. I didn't even tell him or say like, hey, do you hate me? Like, do you still wanna talk? He already knew right up front, I'm gonna reassure her and tell her that I wanna be with her and had that strong communication from the get-go. I didn't even have to ask him. I need that, you know, he just knew to give me that reassurance and oh, it is just, honestly, it's just really sexy. <laughs> but because we have this level of communication, he's able to give me that security that I need. I feel like he's allowed me to reach a new level of trust, not just only in our relationship, but in myself and with other people. He's really bettered me as a person, just giving me that security blanket. And then also with that strong communication, you're gonna wanna make sure that you address problems up front. Just because y'all are so far apart doesn't mean that it's okay to just sweep things under the rug. You can address problems, let your partner know, and attack the problems together. Never get mad at your partner for them. Make sure that you are addressing the problems together. Like something recently is Zara and I realized that we were FaceTiming a little bit too much and it was getting in the way of our own lives that we were living in our own separate locations. We were like, oh my gosh, like how do we address this together? And also let our partner know like, hey, it's not that I don't want to talk to you like I actually really want to talk to you all the time I want to talk to you so much that I literally was letting it like interfere with my day-to-day -day life but you know it's doing that so how, how do we make sure that we're not causing this additional problem in our life rule number two create a visit plan decide how often y'all are gonna see each other and stick to it. Dara and I decided that we want to see each other every two months and actually we recently have been doing every 45 days which oh, has been so 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 nice. You want to make sure that you are seeing each other regularly and often enough that feels comfortable for you. Also you need to decide where you're gonna visit. The first visit Dara came to LA then the last visit I went to Dublin and then this visit which is in just a few weeks Dara is coming back here to LA. We switch off every single time so you want to make sure that you are ooh, doing places that like make sense for you like do you want to just go to each other's home do you want to meet somewhere in the middle do you want to go on a vacation and try a new place that you both have never been together make sure that you have all of that in mind and you're both like accommodating for what makes sense for both of you and what you see as feasible for y'all's lifestyles if you are visiting each other's homes though you don't have to just always sit at each other's houses and kind of like play house you're allowed to make new memories and try new places and do new things this curl literally looks like shiitake i think i need to concentrate it on it for one hot second okay <laughs> oh my god why does it look like this i feel like these front money pieces are always like literally the hardest for me to do okay well we're gonna stick that <laughs> When I last visited Dara in Dublin, we also explored the countryside in Ireland. And then we also did a two night trip in Paris, which was literally so fun because I told Dara that I really, really wanted to go to Disneyland. So he took me to Disneyland, which was the sweetest of him ever. And then also when he comes to LA in just a few weeks, we're going to go to Joshua Tree, have a little getaway, sleep in a new bed, you know, get an Airbnb and, you know, still vacation together. Cause that's also a really important test in a relationship like can you vacation together so that's a good way to make sure that you're also getting in that relationship test <laughs> also make sure that you're scheduling like downtime because you're gonna want to do all this fun stuff together but you never get the time okay <laughs> you like never get the time to just sit and relax with each other so make sure that you're just like okay we're gonna tonight just like sit and watch movies or maybe schedule like a whole day where you literally just lay in bed and don't get up and you order Chinese okay that's gonna be really important because you don't get those really close like super super intimate moments together you know be boring <laughs> also when you're visiting each other plan your visits and dates in advance and even if you can like buy those tickets in advance this way you're going to know that you're having a date that you're working toward it makes it so much more bearable when you can count down the days and know okay this is when i'm going to see my person and then something that was super super cute write notes to your partner before they leave so like the last day that y'all are together sit down each get a journal or a piece of paper or whatever 
whatever works. Bare your soul, okay? Talk about how amazing this trip was, talk about your love, talk about how excited you are to see them next, and just give the person a little something to cling to when you're saying goodbye and something that they can hold on to and read in between the next visit. It's gonna be just really helpful to have those words by your side because of course you can have a text or a phone call, but it's just another little reminder that's just like really nice. And rule number three, have an end date. When you're in a relationship, you should be working towards building a future together, building a life together. So if you never know when you're gonna end up together or end up in the same place, same country, same state, whatever, it's kind of like, um, where is this going? Is this all futile? I don't even know what this means. And you don't want that to build up any anger or just like confusion. Like you never really want to be confused with your person, right? So <laughs> with that being said, you want to talk about your future. If and when, <laughs> I shouldn't say if, when you guys move in together who's gonna be moving are you gonna be moving to them are they gonna move to you are you guys gonna move in to a new place together like are you gonna try out a new place when you all do move are y'all gonna live together are they gonna move into your place or are you gonna live alone y'all need to talk about these things because all of those are super important logistics in uprooting your life and speaking of uprooting your life it is really helpful to think about a game plan of what happens if y'all don't work out I know that's really scary to think about and no one wants to think about if you don't work but it does happen i actually had a friend who her and her boyfriend were literally dating for years i think like three or four years he lived in canada and he finally moved to america to be with her and they broke up after two weeks of him moving to america so it does happen and that's not to say like oh my gosh that could happen to you but it does happen and it's okay to talk about god forbid something happens are you gonna be okay and just having a plan like yeah i'm gonna move back or no i'm gonna stay in this place and stay at the job that i got or this is what we do with our lease if we decided to live together and you know we need to break the lease or we'd stay roommates blah 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 just knowing that you've thought that out can really help give you peace of mind too if that person is moving to you it's not like oh my gosh i'm ruining their life if something doesn't go right it's not like your fault or anything and yeah like they're still gonna have a wonderful life and you're still gonna have a wonderful life should it not work out and then also you're gonna want to really make sure that oh that curl is horrible let me redo that <laughs> and then also you really want to make sure that you're respecting the time that you have apart i'm so guilty of this i get so upset and mad that we're in a long distance relationship all the time i'll literally be like Hmm, I hate that we're long distance. I hate long distance. This is so annoying. Blah, blah, blah. Not to say it isn't. Long distance is annoying. It is annoying that you aren't with your partner all the time, okay? But if you just spend all your time being pouty, 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 you're not going to enjoy the time that you have together and then you're just going to be mad with your person all the time. And that's not fun. Like, they don't really want to be around someone who's always annoyed, right? Seemingly about them. So you want to make sure that you're not building resentment or impatience in that, you know? If you have that date in the calendar, you're going to know that it's coming and you're going to know what you're looking forward to. Just like how you were counting down to each of your visits, you're going to be counting down to this end date, ending the long distance and it's something to look forward to it we still got a little bit to go but i'm not worried about it okay <laughs> so we are going to do bonus round bonus questions first question should you have an open relationship if you are doing long distance and i'm gonna give you a really easy answer here that answer is no no don't you dare don't you dare do that i swear to <laughs> Don't you dare. I know people do do it. I know people do it and power to them. But if you were asking me and you're asking me for my advice, don't do that because open relationships oftentimes mm, is one person already having that one foot out the door and they're the one who suggests it. Then their partner is so in love with them and just really wants to be with them. So they're going to a lot of times like convince themselves that that's something they want to do if it means that they're going to be with their person and then you end up in this open relationship. Both of you don't even really want to do it because one person is only half in the relationship. The other person is really wanting to be with this person. So just no one ends up happy and it's just not worth it. Oh, Will? Nope. Literally, I don't know why, but these money pieces are actual death for me. Like I cannot ever get them right. <laughs> yeah, that looks so bad. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna work on that. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> okay, one more time. Let's let's try this. Do I hate it? No, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think I might need to redo the other side though. <laughs> Next question. Based on everything I said, who should be initiating these conversations? Both of you. Both of you should be talking about everything that I've said. If you're entering a long distance relationship, both of you should be doing all that you can to make it work. 
that kind of is a sign to you if you are the only one initiating these conversations or the only one who kind of seems like you care about this kind of stuff i would take stock of that mm, like is that a sign of a bigger problem and something else that i should be looking at okay i'm like looking in my mirror here to see if there are any straight pieces that i need to address i'm actually not crazy mad about this this piece this front piece actually didn't do too horrible i know that when i do my hair sometimes now though I get these like kinks in my hair we're gonna work on that we're gonna work on that and the last question does being in long distance get easier no it doesn't get easier but you get better at it <laughs> it is so tough being in a long distance relationship but with all of the above framework having those tools you know your strong communication having that love for each other having that trust that loyalty so many of those amazing qualities that your partner brings to the table and you bring to the table having that together y'all are gonna make this work it's gonna be worth it you're gonna have so much love in the world i promise and i i'm so excited to see how you, how your love blossoms like and you deserve to have that love so i can't wait for y'all to be together <laughs> make sure to like this video and subscribe and comment one thing that you learned from this video down below <laughs> if you don't already follow my instagram and tiktok make sure you follow me at leanne healy thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time and i love you so so, so much Mwah.